Welcome back to Franbo. Isn't it amazing what taking some time away from a game can do to your puzzle solving abilities? I mean, if you take a long time away, it's probably going to make it worse, but if you just take a little bit, maybe uh, a couple hours, or maybe a day, you know, sleep on it, some things become immediately obvious. What just became obvious to me as soon as I got into the game is what number is on each one of these things in the so-called normal world is telling me what the combination is supposed to be, or rather what the order of the combination is supposed to be. That just became blindingly obvious. This one is one. And in this world, it's eight. So the first one is eight to the right. Okay. <laughs> I think I've got this now. Number two is... Uh, that one is... I believe that's five to the right. Five to the right. Number three is that one, which is eight to the left, eight to the left. Number four is this one. Six to the right. And the fifth one is... Nine to the left, I believe. Let's just double check that. Mm -hmm. Bingo! Yeah, sometimes to solve a puzzle, you just need to take a little bit of time. Just take some time away, and when you come back to it with fresh eyes, new stuff happens. You, you realize new stuff. Sometimes. Other times you take time away and you come back and you're even more confused than you were before. It really depends. Okay, so eight to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Eight to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nine to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Oh god. The light. Why do I feel like something's gonna be in this room when I turn on the light? Aha! Surprise, Fran! Happy birthday! That's why you locked me in there, Edward. Just it was a birthday present. Yeah. I totally believe that. <clears throat> Not creepy at all. Oh, a birthday party. Whoa, I thought you wanted to kill Mr. Midnight. You lied to me. We lied to you in order to keep your attention in another direction. I'm very sorry I had to fool you, my friend. We wanted to surprise you, my dear friend. Come and eat cake. Uh, all right, thank you, Kitty. You really surprised me. Thank you, Edward, sir. The cake is made of all ingredients you like. Mr. Midnight told me which ones. And we have something very special for you. From all members of the ship. But that means all of us, naturally born or handmade beings. Here you go. I hope you find it educational. Wow, I love the wrapping. Can I open it now, please? Yes, go ahead. Open it. Based on the book I've read before and the general shape of it, I feel like that's a foot. Or a shoe. Or maybe a foot, like a severed foot in a shoe. Oh. Well, that's a bit more pleasant. Wow, a cat doll. Aw, oh, thank you so much. I love it. It's beautiful. It may give your eyes a new perception. You know, like the ultra reality. Is that what happens when I take the red pills, sir? Is the ultra reality what I see? Well, it depends. Would you like some explanations? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, please. Look, what you've seen is a mixture of different realities. And the ultra reality is like an invisible room where everything exists at the same time. For example, at this exact coordinate of time and space, we're having a birthday party. 
but in the ultra-reality, other things are happening all the time. Slower, faster, or just invisible to the human eye. It's because of time. Humans can define past, present, and future. Defining things encapsulates reality. It gives humans a chance to understand their environment. You have a different perception of the environment. It's not linked to definitions. Do you understand what I say? Uh, I'm not sure, sir. I think, maybe. I feel a bit dizzy. <laughs> that may be the ship going up and down. Blow on the candles now, dear. We're about to reach our destination. You mean we're about to get home? Did you hear that, kitty? Yes, we're about to arrive. Really? Wow, how exciting. All right, here I go. Uh-oh. Oh no, 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 no. Is it the Kamalos? Oh dear, what's happening? Mr. Midnight, are you all right? I'm all right, but I hope the ship won't break. It sounds dangerous. Fran, you have to help. I have to drive the machine again. Oh yeah, I think we're getting attacked by Kamalos and I probably need to use the water teapot thing to keep them at bay. What do you bet? I think so. Uh, the automatic driver was destroyed by the Kamalos. Yes, those... <clears throat> All right, we're going to water them to, well, water them to life. Because it's actually not going to kill them, it's going to transform them. There's one left alive. You have to get rid of it. Find it. Fast. How do I do that, sir? Water. That cleans the dirt. Hurry up now. Remember, it may be hiding from your eyes. Oh my goodness, kitty. I'm scared. Me too, my friend. We have to find the Kamala. I really hope the water destroys it. Let's go. Alright, it's got to be up here. Hmm... Or maybe not. Where are you? Can I open this door from this side now? Nope. Do I have to use this? Wow, it opened! Is that a keyhole? I wonder what would happen if I find the key. Huh. The key to Mr. Midnight's heart. Strange. Soft and nice. It feels like Mr. Midnight had a baby. <laughs> Wait, what did that say? The doll also feels handmade. That's even more beautiful. Aww. I want a Mr. Midnight plush. That'd be awesome. I'm just gonna pour this everywhere. Maybe it's invisible. Oh, there it is. It's messing up the engine. Okay, well, uh, I've already got water, so... Ah, don't run away. Where are you going? Okay, so I didn't completely kill it. Looks like I injured it and it went onto the roof. Okay, there we go. Uh, looks like it's already aimed at it. Oh, no, it's not. I still didn't quite get it. Alright. Another good soaking. <laughs> do I just need to keep soaking it? Or do I need to do something different? I wonder. I think I finally got rid of the Kamala. I'm the best. I should go back to Itward. God, I hope I got rid of it. 
Seems rather strong. Edward, sir, we did it. The Kamala is gone. It's gone, yes. But it's too late, dear. I can't take you home. We're going down. No, please, don't tell me this. It's not fair. Not fair. I will always take care of you, my dear. And the ship was going down until it crashed. Everything was destroyed. The end. But, that is a very sad ending, Edward. Tell me another story, please. Alright. This is the story of Fran, Bo, and me. When she promised never to forget me, or about the magic of everything. <laughs> I promise, Edward. I'll never forget you. Good. Now it's time to sleep. Expect me in your dreams, my friend. Edward? Kitty, we're alive. We survived the crash. Oh dear, yes. We are alive. Hmm, but Edward is gone. But he brought us home. We are outside the town, Fran. I can smell it. Are you sure, Kitty? Are we already home? I thought you'd be happier about it. What is it? It's just that... I wonder where Edward is. I wish I could say goodbye. Maybe you can take the medicine to see him again. Yes, Kitty, but I took all the pills already, you see? The bottle is empty. Anyway, let's go home. Maybe Edward will come to me someday. A red bicycle? Is this Edward's bicycle? Or mine? Anyway, it's broken, so I can't ride it. So I wonder, I wonder what's actually happening versus what she seems to think is happening. I mean, obviously very little of what's happened has actually been reality. But obviously, reality has influenced it, and shaped it. These dreams and visions that she's been having. Maybe she was actually in that children's... Uh, mental hospital and she did actually escape and she ran away and found a bike took it most of the way here and then it broke and she just imagined some grand journey in between escaping from this place escaping from the mental hospital and arriving here Oh my goodness, this is our street, Kitty. Hayes Street. Hayes Street? <gasps> hmm. That's a strange name. Hayes, kind of like the haze you get into. Mentally. Yes, it is. This feels too good to be true. Way too good. Here we are. This looks much more gray than I remembered. Well, I hope Aunt Grace will be happy to see me. I've still got the stuff, the diary, even this 
this box that I haven't opened yet. And I've still got this. It still needs a key. Hmm. Aunt Grace? Hello? Maybe she's not at home, dear. Do you have the key to go inside? No, I don't have it, Kitty. But I know there's a hidden key somewhere. I just need to remember where. Hmm. Let's find it. Maybe under a flower pot? <laughs> I'm sorry, little insects. Don't run away. Oh. Oh. Hmm. A key. What is this? A note. It says, I took the key, signed Fran. Fran? That's me. But I haven't taken the key. And I didn't write that note. This is all so confusing. What should I do now? Hmm. Come here, kitty. You must climb and go through the window. I couldn't find the key. It seems that I already took it. You already took the key, but you don't have it? That sounds very strange. Yes, it's very strange. I only found a note that I don't remember writing. But now, in order to get inside, Kitty, you must climb and open the door for me. Ah, all right then. Wish me luck. You can do it, Kitty. Be careful. Kitty? Mr. Midnight, do you hear me? Kitty? Open the door. <gasps> oh, God, that's the doctor. Fran? I can't believe this. You're alive. Where were you? Hmm. I don't know how much it matters what I even say at this point, but... Dr. Dearn? I'm fine. Please don't take me back to the asylum. I've been looking for you... I've been looking for you a long time now. How did you escape? I... I escaped through the yellow door, sir. Hmm, but why are you outside the house? Well, I don't have the key, but Mr. Midnight is inside now. He climbed and went through the window of the second floor, sir. Mr. Midnight, isn't that your missing cat? Yes, but we found each other in the end. Sir, may I ask why you are here? I came to meet Miss Grace. I have something very important to tell her. I think she's not at home, sir. Well, it may be better this way. You'll have to come with me, then. No, I won't leave my kitty again. Let's wait until he opens the door. Fran, I don't believe your cat is inside the house. That's impossible. I'm telling you the truth. He is inside. He will open the door in a minute. Stop it, Fran. Face reality. Your cat is dead. You must come with me now. Let me guess, the door's gonna open. No, oh, not quite. God, are we really going back after all that? I'm sorry, Fran. I don't want to hurt, hurt you or scare you. I'm just worried about Mr. Midnight, sir. You made me leave him. Is he really alive? Of course he is, sir. Why would I lie about it? This feels so wrong. You know, Fran, I was fired from the asylum because I knew too much. I have found things that I do not understand yet. I really thought you were dead. Look at these documents. Wait, what? Okay, let's read these. Family murder on Hay Street. 
the bodies were perfectly sliced. Martin and Lucia Bo Dagenhart were found early this week brutally murdered in their residence on Hayes Street. The investigating police officer, Marco Holma, said, It seems that the bodies were perfectly sliced, which would cause a quick instantaneous death. Also, there were no signs of a struggle in the house, so the victims must have been caught completely by surprise and were unable to fight back. The police interrogated Grace Dagenhart, Lucia's twin sister, but the police didn't find any useful information. The youngest in the family, Fran Bo, was found in the woods one day after her parents' murder. She froze to death. So Grace was Lucia's twin sister. Hmm. Dear Gladys, let the newspaper know about Fran Bo. She was found in the woods, frozen to death. She ran away from home after finding about her parents' murder. There's her obituary. Fran is now free from all pain. We hope you reunite with your family in heaven. So am I actually dead then? But then, how, how am I here? Where am I? What am I? But I'm not dead, sir. This is all lies. I see that. I also found out that your medicine was switched. You were given a new variant of duotine. When I looked at it in the laboratory, the levels of ectoplomatin were too high. That can't be good. Ectoplomatin creates a door between the subconscious and conscious. The problem is, if the ectoplomatin is too high, the door will be too wide. And that can create a great confusion in your brain. A great confusion in my brain? I am a bit confused, yes. But that's because of all the new things that I can see and feel. What do you mean, Fran? I can see the ultra-reality, sir, and also travel into other worlds. Ultra-reality? Uh, that must be the consequences of duotine, nothing more. That is not true. If I had some more medicine, I could show you. You don't need that medicine anymore. Besides, it's all in your head, Fran. All in my head, you say? Then I may be able to control it. I, I mean that you are imagining things. That's all. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Alright, that scared me. I tried to tell my mother the truth, but father would harm her as well. I don't want my father playing with his knife again. My arms hurt. Uh... Oh, did your father harm you with his knife, doctor? What? Who told you that? You did. Or, or didn't you, sir? I... I haven't said anything about it. Oh my goodness, then it's true. Oh, please, let's focus. But you're not listening to me, sir. We need to find out the truth. I wonder who's behind all this. The nurses? Oswald? Who knows? I do know, sir. It's the big black monster, Ramor. He took my parents, and now he haunts me. He wants me dead. Oh, I wish I stayed in the Thirsta with Palantros and the Great Wizard. What are you talking about? Please, Fran, I'm serious. I never said goodbye to Itward or Palantros, and my kitty is all alone. Palantros, Itward, please, Fran. Palantros is the doctor of a Thirsta. He's a flying creature, very fluffy, sir. And Itward is my faithful friend. He brought me home with his machine. Seems you've been living inside a fairy tale. It wasn't good all the time, sir. The twins are gone because of me. I saw myself killing Mr. Midnight, and I saw mother and father, too. The twins? What twins? The girls that were attached to each other. 
Attached, you say? That reminds me of the Clara and Mia case. Two girls in the asylum that claimed to see a creature named Edward or something. Edward? I, I think you are misunderstanding, sir. It's Edward. But what happened to these girls? And Dr. Oswald was experimenting on them. He sewed them together. Mostly to see the reactions of the DNA, but nothing happened. How, how can he say that with a straight face? He just sewed them together to see the reactions of the DNA. You don't think that is maybe a little bit unethical? A few months later, they died and their bodies were thrown into a well. I'm, I'm sorry? Don't you think that's a bit strange too? Is that how you dispose of bodies? That's awful, sir. You can't take me back to the asylum. Don't worry, I, I won't. I brought you with me, so you can help me. Maybe we can find something that will lead us to those responsible for all this disgrace. Thank you, Doctor. Maybe Palantros was right about you. You are not a bad doctor. You're just an old man following the rules. Following the rules? Well, not tonight. Here we are. But this is the cemetery, sir. What are we doing here? You'll see. Come on, follow me. Oh my, where's this going? Wow, hello, stone woman. Are you sleepy? You're scary. I wish I had wings like you, but I don't. I just get in the car? <laughs> oh, hey. What the heck is that doing on the driver's side floor? A crowbar. I hope the doctor doesn't mind if I take it. I never touched a steering wheel before. Father never allowed that. But now I'm on my own, so I can. <laughs> vroom, vroom. It can't be good to it can't be good to press all the buttons. Oh, yes it can. It could be very fun. The gearbox, I wonder if it has little secrets inside. Probably not, unfortunately. The car seats are quite comfortable. This is your parents' resting place. And also yours. Wait, is he going to dig up my body? Why did you bring me here, sir? I'm sorry, Fran. But things are how they are. Your parents were killed. Knowing who killed them can help us make things right. What do you mean by right, sir? I mean that if we can find the guilty ones, we will have justice. Use the law to punish such behaviors, and prevent others from being harmed. I understand, sir. And for what did you need my help? To find clues and evidence. We need to open the coffins. Alright, sir. I'll help. Maybe the deedle worms came already. Who... Hmm. Anyway, we have to find shovels to dig. I'll go left, and you can go right. I'll see you in a few minutes, right here. All right? Yes, Dr. Dearn. I'll see you soon. Are we really gonna dig up all of our graves and look at the bodies? That can't be good for mental health. Jesus. Yeah, they really do think I'm dead. Little candle, keep my parents warm. Oh, lovely little bear, you must take care of my parents. A rose, is this for the bad smell of the rotten bodies? <laughs> oh. Hello, father. I know that you didn't choose to leave me. 
so I'm not angry at you anymore. But I miss you a lot. I promise I will be happy. It isn't fair to be sad all the time. Mommy, this is very hard. Knowing that you're not around anymore. That really makes me feel lost in the world. But I promise I'll do my best. I'll be happy, Mommy. Fran Bo, huh? I wonder who came up with a lie like this one. Now I remember seeing myself dead in the asylum. But why? Why just me? I know the big monster wants me dead. But what does the asylum have to do with the monster? Could I light the candle? Perhaps? Oh, There we go. I wonder what the lady has hidden between her hands. Is it a little bug? Well, we can break her hands apart and see. <laughs> I don't... She's not actually going to do it, right? No. Alright. Let's go right. No name. No flowers. Maybe nobody is down there. But nobody likes to be dead. So that's great. <laughs> oh. oh, it's stuck. This must be the shovel storage room. Just my luck. Oh. Shh. You have to keep it down. Fabio? It's Fabio, right? Oh, but I'm not Fabio. I'm Fran. Hello, little pinecone. Is it Fabio or Fabio? I don't know. What? Oh my goodness. A giant. Oh, please, don't be scared. I won't harm you. I thought no giants could see us. I think I can see you because I have very big eyes. You see? Oh, I see. I'm Sebastian, by the way. The tribe's collector. The tribe's collector? That sounds exciting. Right now, we're trying to find some shiny leather. We need it for the mating ritual. Oh, that's quite interesting. Shiny leather. Hmm. Yes, last year we used old human skin, but the deedleworms wanted it back. So we're looking for something more... synthetic. Well, I hope you can find the leather. Um... Sebastian, would you do me a favor? It depends on the favor, giant miss. I was thinking that you could open the door for me from the inside. I could do that, but we can help each other instead. Bring me a piece of leather and I'll open the door. Alright, giant miss? But where will I ever find that? Huh. Alright, I'll see what I can do. I'm guessing I probably need to tear it from the upholstery of the car. Well, the doctor's really not going to like this. Oh. Whoops, what a big hole I made. Well, I have the leather now. I guess an ugly seat is the least of our problems right now. <laughs> wow, thank you, giant miss. Our tribe, the pine... <laughs> the pine zealous, will be happy. And now, I'll open the door. Just a second. Ouch. Are you alright, Sebastian? Sebastian? I'm... Um, I'm alright, miss. Yes. Good. Well, thank you. You opened the door. You're welcome, giant miss. Uh, Fabio? What the? Where are they going? Oh, I have to go, miss. Good night. Hey, Fabio, wait for me. I have the leather. <laughs> what strange little creatures. Huh, there's nothing in here I could use. This is not wonderful at all. I need to find something to dig with. I can't dig with a broom. There's nothing in here I could use, huh? 
Oh, there you are, Fran. Look, I found us a pair of shovels. Let's dig. Well, now we'll have to come up with something to open the coffins. They're stuck. I had a crowbar in my car just in case, but I couldn't find it. Oh, I took the crowbar, sir. I needed it to open the door. Do you want it back? No need, Fran. But you can do the honors of opening the coffins. All right, sir. I'll open them. Why is he having Fran do the opening? Jesus, come on, man. Here we go. Uh... Oh my goodness. Father, the deedle worms took your eyes. I wish you could talk and tell me who took you away from me. Was it the big bad monster, Daddy? Oh, Mother, you're so skinny. A bit too much, I would say. But I guess you would take that as a compliment, wouldn't you? Is the bed comfortable? Well, sweet dreams, Mommy. And this one should be friends. Is there going to be a body in the coffin? What the? Mr. Midnight. But how? Why? <laughs> Woohoo! I'm not in the coffin! Great! But that can't be my kitty because Mr. Midnight is home. Poor kitty. I wonder if you had a name. Well, I'll name you Albert. Hmm, it might be Mr. Midnight. Did you see anything that could bring us closer to the killer? No, sir. I just feel really bad doing this. Seeing my parents like this. Also, that dead cat is not my cat. They're lying. Fran, I told you. Your cat was missing, and maybe this one is actually your cat. It can't be, sir. I did find my kitty. You have to believe me. Take me home and I'll show you. Please? Alright, Fran. I'll take you back home. I'll take care of this later. I still need to find some clues. Thank you, sir. Let's go. I'm sorry, he's gonna come back to cover the bodies later. He's just gonna leave these bodies completely uncovered. You better hope nobody comes by, because if they see this, man, are you in trouble. Oh, Jesus. Vanished into the hands of darkness. You have no manners. I'm not afraid of you anymore. I've taken away from you the light. The one you love. The one you respect and the one you desire to love you. <laughs> you broken little girl. The House of Madness invites you inside. If you want to find those you love, in darkness you must wake up. Wake up now, Fran. Wake up. Grace? Grace, is that you? My darling, you finally woke up. You're at home, my dear. Am I... Really? That's incredible. I'm so happy to see you. Please, give me a hug. Uh, soon, my darling. And where's Mr. Midnight? 
Your cat? Well, you know, he ran away after what he did. What? He ran away? But what did he do? Well, your cat killed my sister and your father. He's a traitor. That's not true. It can't be true. He didn't do it. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. In the end, we must have a guilty one, right? But you can't blame Mr. Midnight. He's my best friend. But it's easier to blame somebody else than taking responsibility, isn't it? I will always take responsibility for my actions, even if they're not so good. What a good girl. Rest now, my darling. You need it. But Aunt Grace, don't leave me. Why am I chained to the bed? Because your hands do bad things when they're untied. What are you talking about? Uncuff me now. I have to go find Mr. Midnight. Little, little shining Fran. Don't you worry about the lies. The seeker of the truth will always die because the evil will never hide. Little, little shining Fran, go to bed and sleep tight. And forget the pain inside your mind. You were selected to suffer, to cry, and hate. But the darkness wants to free you from all disgrace. Sleep tight, my darling Fran. Oh no, don't leave me here. Aunt Grace, come back, please. Why is she acting so strange? Why blame Mr. Midnight? Kitty couldn't have killed my parents. His claws are so tiny and soft. I hope he's fine, but what should I do now? Tick-tock, tick-tock. Crazy sound. It never stops. Now that I think about it, the clockmaker said that time is a layered reality. Maybe there's another version of me in this room, in another time. Or I'm just imagining things. But if it's true, how could I make contact with her? Dr. Dearn said that everything is in my head. How strange. I'm trying to get a feel for the story. What's, you know, what's real and what's not. At first I thought that she, you know, everything happened pretty much as, um, as we know it. Her parents were murdered. After that, she was so just emotionally scarred that she just... Either from that she had trouble telling what reality was, or I guess, based on what Dr. Dearn said, it sounds like... Um, it sounds like the reason she had so much trouble telling what reality is isn't directly from what happened with her parents, but because of the, the messed up medication that they gave her. That made it so that she couldn't tell what's reality and what's not. It broke the... it opened the door between the conscious and the subconscious too wide, as he said. So that sounds right. I'm sure she had severe issues when she went to the, into, into the mental asylum in the first place, but obviously it was made way worse by the medication. But then after that, what I was thinking is that she had simply escaped from the asylum and all her adventures, visiting all these different realities and stuff, was just a fantastical interpretation of her escape and of her travel to Aunt Grace's house. And then it sounded like, for some reason, the world thinks she's dead. They said, I mean, there's a newspaper article talking about how they found her body in the woods, frozen. So, now I'm wondering, is, is that real? Is she actually dead? But that doesn't make much sense. So if she isn't dead, then why do they believe her to be dead? Why do they think they found her body? I don't really know. I honestly, we're playing this game through the eyes of Fran, and Fran obviously is having a hard time telling what reality is, so consequently I'm having a hard time telling what reality is. Jeez. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.